Listen, I always like it when we get a chance to fix people and when we have an opportunity uh, on a television show like this to be able to say, hey, you know what, you're going to know more. You're going to know more about your condition, whatever that condition is. Um, if you just pay attention. I'm going to ask you to pay attention once again to Dr. David Tolan. It's good to be talking to you because we all have a set of eyes and we probably pay less attention to them than we should. Uh, on this series that we've been doing, by the way, with uh, Arizona uh, eye doctors, uh, we have talked about so many conditions. We are going to be talking in an upcoming episode about glaucoma, tremendously important. I did a test, in fact, a DNA test for macular degeneration, and we're going to be finding out what the results of that are. But today, it's floaters and flashes, which sounds like a small dance club in Chandler. Uh, but t tell us what that is. Well, flashes are actually a phenomenon that occurs when the retina gets stimulated. Okay, now there's many causes for flashes. Uh, inf infection, inflammation can do it. Things we can um, stay away from? Uh, trauma, of course, you know, that can definitely do it. Um, but the most common is actually just the normal process of life, aging. It is where the fluid in the back of the eye starts to shrink, condense, and start to pull away from the retina. And that's when people start to notice little sparks, little lightning bolts, streaks, things of that sort. We are all aging. Some on the staff here would suggest some of us more than others. <laughs> but I want to know, since I have never experienced flashes or floaties or any of those things, uh, I've never even come close to anything that could be defined as any of those things, then what kind of percentage are we talking about in the population? Well, basically, from what I understand, anybody over the age of 60, the percentage is about 15 to 20 percent of the folks. Now, I have to admit where I'm at, my practice in Sun City, I would say that it's significantly higher. I would say probably 50 or 60 percent. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure where they got that figure. So, it, so is it like strobes? Well, what happens actually is, is the fluid itself, okay? It, um, we lose a product that's called hyaluronic hy hy acid. HA for short, makes it easier for me. When we lose that, the water is actually drawn out of that sac, the vitreous in the eye. And when that happens, the whole mass condenses and starts to pull on the retina. Now there's nothing you can really do to prevent that. You know, that's just part of life. That's why we have sore joints because of the HA that disappears. That's why our skin isn't soft and supple like oh. it was when we're 20, because everything just kind of draws down a little bit. Well, the pulling, while that's a sign, you know, there's a lot of people don't even realize that that happened. But uh, for those that do, it's important that you don't ignore that because that could eventually lead to what's called a retinal tear. When that happens, and if there is a retinal tear, it can be fixed rather easily. But there are a number of folks that'll just kind of put it off, not do anything, maybe give it a week, and then a retinal tear will turn into a full-blown retinal detachment. That is sight-threatening. That is a big deal. But how am I going to know, though, whether I have a retinal tear? Is there discomfort involved? Uh, actually, there's not, and that's uh, the real interesting thing. Um, the retina, as, as wonderful as it is, was meant to see. It wasn't meant to feel things. So it responds to visual stimuli, not mechanical. So no, you will not feel it. All right, but if i do recognize right now as many people who are watching the show mm -hmm. i say oh well wait a minute hold it i know what that's like the floaters and the flashes uh can that be treated before it gets as serious as a retinal tear absolutely and that's uh basically on the person's um intervention you know once they see that they should be making an appointment with an eye doctor preferably preferably that day if not the following and insist on an evaluation you make it sound urgent. It, it is in the sense of preventing problems later. That's the urgency. What's simple now turns into a big problem. All right. Uh, how early, because we're talking about the fact that uh, many people as they age experience this, how early might it happen? Could our kids recognize floaters and flashes? Yeah, and in fact, most of us from time to time see one or two floaters 
that's just the fluid moving around. That's not really a big issue. What we get concerned about is a sudden rush of floaters, blurriness, or flashes. And that can occur at, at truly any age, but it's mostly 50 and over. So you say, all right, take care of it now. Don't mm -hmm. wait because it can evolve into something far more dangerous like this retinal tear. Correct. Where do I go? Truly any eye doctor. Just insist that you have a full dilated exam that uh, you're really looked at. He's, he, they've used numerous lenses and, and taken a real good look at you, giving you the full story. And at that point, I would make an appointment about six weeks later to have the process repeated. And will I notice a change immediately after treatment? No. You will notice if, if it is typically just a floater or a vitreous separation, that will slowly dissipate and you won't notice it quite so much over time. The flashes will decrease and um, you'll just get to the point you really won't see them, the floaters that is, unless you go looking for them. And at that point, um, you just have to condition yourself not to see them. You know where we as patients feel helpless is when we watch a television show like this and a professional like yourself says, if you notice this, go in right now to the eye doctor of your choice, tell him about it, and that you saw it on television that you want to take care of. And the doctor says, no, nah, no, you don't have anything to worry about. Uh, as a matter of fact, research over here that I've read says uh, that's no concern. What do you do when the doctor that you're talking to uh, just simply doesn't take you seriously? Find another doctor. Good. Good. I, I like answers like that yeah. because a second opinion or a third opinion uh, is really vital in order for the patient to be in charge. Absolutely. And, and, and especially in this event, I mean, it is the patient that's in charge. They're, they need to know what to do, not to waste time, get it checked out. Yes, it probably is going to be totally fine, but nevertheless, you need to know this. And then at that point, you can decide what you're going to do from there. If allowed... Uh, to uh, to continue, that is the floaters and the flashers. Uh, will it always develop into a retinal tear? No, actually most of them do not. And in fact, a lot of people have a vitreous separation and not even know it. They're not even aware of it. Well, I sure thank you, though, for coming by. And I hope that you'll be watching in your office when we talk about glaucoma coming up. I will and, be. And also, I'll certainly be paying attention when somebody tells me about the results of my DNA test for macular degeneration. I don't know. The only thing I do know is we'll be back in a moment.